The discovery of organic molecules, specifically amino acids, within samples returned by NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission from asteroid Bennu has sent profound reverberations through the scientific community. In September 2023, NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft returned to Earth carrying material it collected from asteroid Bennu. One reason Bennu was selected for sample return was due to its composition. After initial study by the spacecraft, we found the asteroid to be rich in carbon-based molecules like organics, which is the stuff of life. Bennu is also a primitive asteroid that serves as a time capsule for preserving materials from the dawn of the solar system. Since the sample has returned, scientists have been studying the captured materials in labs on Earth. Now, their findings show that Bennu comes from a wet world that formed in the coldest regions of the solar system, likely beyond the orbit of Saturn and nearly 4.6 billion years ago. Scientists were surprised to find that the asteroid sample held such a complete library of minerals that precipitated from the evaporation of salty water, many of which are similar to minerals found from dried, briny lakes on Earth, like Lake Searles in California's Mojave Desert. When we looked at Bennu, we were expecting it to be full of water, and it, and it is, so it's made mostly of clay minerals, um, which capture water in their structure. But what we weren't expecting to find was that it also contains tiny minerals of salt. So that includes sodium chloride, which you use on your chips. <laughs> table, <laughs> table salt, yes. oh cool. Uh, and also uh, carbonates and sulfates and phosphates. So we found this whole range of different salty materials and we think that these formed from a pod of water or pods of water that would have been under the ground of Bennu's parent body. Uh, and this water would have slowly evaporated away to leave behind these salts. But this salty water is a really exciting environment because that's where you have the potential to be able to make organic molecules. We found 14 of the 20 amino acids used to build proteins, and all five nucleobases of the, that make up the genetic code in DNA and RNA. And what's exciting is the combination. That we're finding these, these, these chemical building blocks, but also these salty brines. And these environments are like places that we think life could have started on the early Earth, and these evaporating salty lakes. So this, this, this is, these are just incredible samples to look at the prebiotic chemistry that may have led to life on Earth. And so to focus on these molecules you just mentioned, so we found the building blocks of proteins, we found the building blocks of DNA and RNA. You know, right. have we found these before? What's the significance in this discovery? Yeah, so we actually have found a lot of these molecules in meteorites. I've been looking at these for the last 30 years. <laughs> and But one of the big frustrations for me with meteorites is that they've, they've, they've been contaminated. You know, these things fall through the atmosphere, they get heated. Um, they hit the ground, they're immediately exposed to, to terrestrial contamination. So you're never quite sure. sure if what you're looking at is real. Well, with Bennu, we have samples now, four and a half billion year old you know, asteroid samples that were protected by a heat shield coming in, so yeah. didn't experience the heat. They were protected from Earth's biology, contained. And, you know, we're finding these building blocks. So, you know, we have higher confidence in these results now. We can believe them. We, we trust that what we're looking at is extraterrestrial organic matter. And it's out there right now, yeah. which is so cool to think about. Uh, and the, everything in the solar system condensed from a cloud of dust and gas. So most of it went in to form the sun in the center. Uh, but then this material also condensed to form the planets and also the minor bodies like the asteroids and uh, comets. Um, so Bennu would have formed from this dusty cloud uh, of material which would have included ice as well. And after it formed, it would, the ice would have melted. It would have been gently heated by a little bit of radioactivity that was inside the body. Uh, and so the ice melted and that uh, then interacted with the rock and produced this whole new suite of minerals that we see today. So that was Bennu's parent body. Then at some point, it also got uh, oh moved, yeah, <laughs> ejected into the inner solar system, first the asteroid belt and eventually um, to 
the near Earth place where we see it today. Uh, and what we see today is basically a rubble pile asteroid. So Bennu is quite small, it's only 500 meters across. And it's basically made up of boulders that are just gently sort of stuck together. Mm -hmm. um, so these are just uh, remnants of impacts that went into its original bigger body. And so, Danny, how could these building blocks have arrived on Bennu. Yeah, informed. And informed, in the, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we just heard from Sarah about the melting of these ices. And one of the really interesting things that we found, actually this was a big surprise, is that the Bennu samples came, uh, have a lot of ammonia. Now, ammonia is the stuff you smell when you, when you clean your windows, right? Yeah. <laughs> Spray, it's pungent. But ammonia is, is also an important building block to form amino acids in nucleal bases. But it needs water to do that, right? So the ammonia can react with things to make these amino acids. So the fact that we're seeing these brines, melted liquid water, and we have these high ammonia concentrations is really, again, pointing towards an outer solar system origin where the ammonia ice was stable. And again, this environment where we can get this really complex organic chemistry because of these, these liquid brines. Yeah, absolutely. When we saw this whole sequence of salts, it reminded us a little bit of uh, lake beds on Earth. So like Searles Lake in California, where the lake itself has evaporated away and left behind this whole sequence of different minerals. Uh, and so this was a great analog for us yeah. to compare to Bennu, because we found a lot of exactly the same minerals. So this help, really helped us kind of visualize what was going on inside Bennu. That's great, and I mean, Danny, we couldn't have really gotten this kind of analysis, right, unless we had these samples back here on Earth. Oh yeah, there's no question. Part of the power of these sample return missions is that you can bring these samples back and you have the world's instruments, right, uh, to, to work with, uh, state-of-the-art instrumentation. We did make measurements at asteroid Bennu and we had hints that there were clay minerals and water. We, have a, we even had hints that there was organic carbon present on the surface, but we didn't know the form. We didn't mm -hmm. know if these were amino acids or uh, other chemical building blocks. Now we know, and that's because we have these samples in the lab and we could use state-of-the-art instrumentation to analyze them. And also these salts, they're very, very delicate. And um, if they came in a meteorite and became uh -huh. exposed to the atmosphere, uh, then they would quickly dissolve away. So it was really important to have this very pristine sample that's mm -hmm. been beautifully curated at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and kept in a nitrogen-only atmosphere and not been exposed to the Earth's atmosphere. This finding offers unparalleled visions into the potential for life beyond Earth.
that actually claims that life on Earth formed long ago from asteroid impact bringing life to our blue planet. The presence of amino acids on Bennu has profound implications for astrobiology, the study of life in the universe. While this finding does not conclusively prove that life exists elsewhere, it strengthens the case for the potential for life to emerge on other worlds with remarkable force. It lends substantial support to the theory of panspermia, which proposes that life could have originated or spread through space via asteroids or comets carrying organic molecules like amino acids. This possibility dramatically expands our understanding of life's reach and potential.